Hello again, viewers, and greetings, fellow space travelers. This is Thorn of Night, and welcome to episode 18 of my bee breeding guide. And what is up with this lag? Anyway, in this episode, I'm going to be covering a new branch of bees. This one is off of the industrious line. It, it is called the agrarian branch. And there are five bees in this branch that are added uh, and most of them by extra bees, but, uh, the bees are, in order from left to right, growing, rural, farmed, thriving, and blooming. And this lag, what is up with this? Anyway, some things you're going to want to know about them. They do prefer normal, normal you know, biome conditions, uh, and they don't work for very long. They have rather short lives and they also don't produce too fast. Uh, but they don't have any adverse effects to the environment or to you, so you don't have to worry about wearing a suit if you don't want to. Uh, a few of them do like having wheat as their flowers, so you're going to have to have some water blocks and some tilled dirt with some wheat on it. But uh, there is one effect that you will probably rather appreciate, especially if you're trying to get a tree farm going, and that is the growth effect off of the blooming bee. Uh, it acts as if it was bone mealing nearby trees in, in their territory. Uh, Treesy? I keep hitting E to exit that thing. Anyway, um, just some quick stats over here. As you can see, they all say some sort of slow or short for their work or their life. Uh, a couple of them like leaves for their uh, for their flower, and the blooming does need the sapling for a flower. But uh, it's normal, normal, and no tolerances generally all the way across the board. Now, as you're trying to breed them, some of the uh, traits from the bees you're breeding with will possibly blend over, but once you get a purebred, that's pretty much what you're going to see there. Uh, now, there are a few things that you will need to know about the output. A lot of them will put out this stuff called wheat and comb, and as you can imagine, aside from the beeswax and honey drops, it will put out wheat uh, when run through a centrifuge. Now, specifically, the farmed bee, uh, d in addition to the wheat and comb, will put out this stuff called CD comb. You would think that part of the output is seeds, but you would be wrong. It puts out the honey drop as usual, but it also puts out this stuff called nut dew. And nut dew can be uh, run through a squeezer to get seed oil. Not much, but it's, it's uh, a fair return. But let's take a look at the actual bees themselves, and hopefully this won't crash. I think this leg might be crashing. Nope, it didn't crash. Hey, and the lag went away. Excellent. All right, the first bee I'm going to be covering here is called the growing bee. Now, for the growing bee, you are going to need uh, some forest bees, which come from those hives. You find them in or near trees in a foresty type biome. Uh, and then you're also going to need some diligent, tre uh, diligent trees. Wow, bees. Uh, from the industrious line. If you need to know how to do that, you can watch my industrious video or you can download this map and go through here and examine it yourself and do some practice runs with the bees. Which, by the way, this map is going to be available for download through a link in the description below. Uh, so you can uh, install the map and uh, figure out how you want to approach your bee breeding situation and what you'll need and get some practice in. It is built in the Unleashed pack for Feed the Beast, so go ahead and grab that as well if you don't have it. But let's take a look at this growing bee. Uh, the f first one here, the princess, is the growing bee. All right, now let's see how long it took me to make this. Uh, this won't necessarily be the amount of tries it takes you, but that's how long it took me. All right. So it took me three generations. Now let's compare it to a, uh, a, uh, pure growing bee. And you can see there are a few differences, mostly in the inactive because it's got the diligent. 
but also in the active there's a little bit of a difference there. No changes there and the output the only difference is the additional comb. Okay, so I'm going to leave these in this chest for you to look at if you need to. And let, let's take a look at the output for the growing bee. First off, the growing bee does need leaves once you get it. It needs the leaves as its flowers, so have some leaf blocks nearby. Either use shears or just plant them near some low-lying trees. But let's see here. Uh, typically, you're going to expect to get three drones out of a breeding session. And they will spit out honeycomb, which... A stack of honeycomb can typically get you about a stack each of beeswax and honey drops if you uh, haven't messed with that yet, which you should have at this point. But let's move on to the next one. This one is called the Rural Bee, and it is a level 5 because it uses a level 4. Again, the Diligent Bee you can find in there, but this time you're going to need a Meadows, which you can get from these hives. You'll generally find them in Plains-type biomes. But you can find them in some others, but that's how they look. And I've got some stock here for you to practice with if you wish. But let's grab a rural bee. That's a diligent. There we go. There's a rural. And I'll grab this so we can see how long it took me to make this thing. Two generations. Not too bad. Now let's compare this to a purebred. Uh, some slight differences, but uh, generally it's the short life and the slow work. Um, the pollination is faster for the purebred versus the uh, the hybrid here, but that will get weeded out once you stabilize the line. And once again, as you can see, it's got the additional comb in there uh, from the diligent line. But I will put these in here for you to look at and tinker with and do some comparisons if you need to. All right, these rural bees do require wheat as their flower. And under this apiary, I have a source block of water. So you know that it isn't just cheated wheat. It's, it's actually grown there. But typically, you're going to get two drones out of this. And as you can see, you can get that wheaten comb from these. And a stack of wheat and comb will not get you much in the line of beeswax and honey drop, but it will get you about a stack of wheat. So that's pretty nice. So next up we have the farmed bee. Now the farmed bee requires you having done the rural bee, but it also requires some cultivated bees to get you going. And the cultivated comes from the apes branch. Likewise, you can get to it from there. Or you can watch my Apes video if you wish. Uh, here's some stock for you to practice with. And the farmed bee is this one right here. And I'll grab the princess. Let's see how long this took me to get. Uh, just a couple generations. Not bad. And let's do a quick comparison. Oh, that's almost a purebred. Look at that. Wow. That's pretty nice. All right, I'll put these in here for you to look at, and uh, let's go over here. Also, it requires, the farmed bee does require wheat, but from the farmed bee, you can get you can get the uh, CD comb, like I had mentioned before, and typically two drones, unless your line isn't stable. Now, this, the uh, CD comb will get you about a stack of these sunny drops and pretty much a stack of nut dew. So that's a pretty high yield percentage there. Moving on to the Thriving Bee, which is a level 6 bee, uh, because it requires two level 5 bees to make. So you're going to have to do a, a good deal of uh, bee breeding to get to the Thriving Bee. And I've got some stock for you to practice with here. But let's see here. That's growing. There's a Thriving. And I'll go ahead and grab the Princess just to get an idea. Two generations. Pretty straightforward there. And the main difference between these looks like the uh, number of drones. Let's see here. No real difference in the output or the produce. So let's put these in here. You can look at those later. 
And the Thriving Bee does require leaves as its flower, so also keep that in mind. But typically you're going to get three drones out of these. And they do put out the uh, honeycomb here, which is, there's another example of honeycomb output. And finally we have the blooming bee, which does require the thriving and the growing. Uh, and let's see here. Uh, da, 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 blooming. All right. Let's test the queen, or the princess, rather. Just one generation. And let's do some comparisons. Ah, okay. Some, a few differences here. Now, the thing to keep in mind about these is the, uh, the effect that they give. That growth effect. Let me put these away. <coughs> Now, I have glass up here, so these did not grow, obviously. But, while I was running them, if these had been able to grow, they would have more than likely grown completely. And, uh, I'd have a bunch of trees sticking out of the top of the building here. But, typically you're going to get the th three drones out of this setup. And, they will also produce honeycomb at a, uh pretty high-ish rate, at least one per breeding cycle, or per queen cycle, and there's some more typical honey uh, uh, honeycomb output there. Now, the bees in this branch can be used for a few other branches later on, namely the agricultural, but also the fossilized saccharin and a little bit in the gem branch. But that is going to have to be it for this episode. I think I've pretty much covered everything. Uh, hopefully this was helpful and useful to you. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I will do my best to respond. And if you like this video, please give it a like. I do appreciate it. Uh, also, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe so you know when my next videos come out. Uh, and if you have any uh, input on other guides that you'd like to see me tackle, uh, I'm not afraid to do the big ones. Uh, I just have to get my hands on them and make sure they work right. But uh, please also let me know that in the comment section. But that's going to have to be it for this one. So thank you very much once again for watching. This is Thorn of Night, and I will talk to you later.